Hey everyone, it's Dale from Houseplant Journal, bringing you clarity on houseplant care. And today I have another question from my email address, help at houseplantjournal.com. Uh, Angie writes, I have a Peperomia obtusifolia that I've had for about four months now. It's done great, never had an issue with it until about a week ago. I noticed a blackened leaf on it, and it's only gotten worse. It seems that the leaf starts turning black, it becomes limp, and then just kind of rots off. I know it's not been over water as I use a moisture probe to check on the soil and only water when it's dried out. Can you help me figure out what's wrong with it? Now traditionally we just look at this picture and yes the plant does have root rot but then a lot of people would just quickly say oh it's been over water. But clearly Angie has tried her best not to over water and even got a moisture meter. But we're missing some of the evidence. We have how long she's had the plant, we know what she has done with it in terms of how she thinks about watering, but the last piece is, where was this plant living? In other words, what kind of light was this plant getting? So I followed up with Angie and said, why don't you show me the place where this plant lives? And here's the photo that I got. Now because I've measured light so many times, with one look at this picture, I know this plant has not been getting adequate light. Now Angie probably thought she was following the instructions for bright indirect light, namely that she thought, okay, indirect means no sun. But the problem with just saying bright indirect light is that it doesn't help you understand where you should put your plants, or more importantly, where you should not put your plants. So listen closely to this guideline. You must put the plant where it has the widest possible view of the sky, and if the sun is going to shine on it for longer than two or three hours, then you can block it with a white sheer curtain. So when you look at this picture, is this plant getting the widest possible view? No, it's so far away that its view is this tiny little angle of the sky. Widest possible means as close as possible. It also means people with bigger windows will have better light. It means people with more windows will have better light. It means people who have fewer obstructions outside will have better light and they'll probably also have to deal with the sun shining on plants and possibly having to block it with a curtain. So that's why plant life is all based on light because potting in a terracotta pot thinking that it'll help the soil dry out faster, uh, using a moisture meter to check when the soil has dried out and thinking that you're watering it according to the right soil dryness, none of that is going to help unless the plant is doing its work, and plants work by combining water and carbon dioxide using the energy of light to make its own food. So if this process is not going on, then it doesn't matter if you wait till the soil dries. It doesn't matter if you pot it in a terracotta pot. It doesn't matter if you use a highly porous soil mixture. This is why I can take care of all my plants just fine without ever using a moisture meter, because first I make sure that the light is right, and then the watering cycle between wet and dry can easily be felt with like a chopstick or just lifting the pot. Now I want you to understand, Angie, this is not your fault. It is the fault of the instructions that fail to convey to you what bright indirect light really means. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, what happened to the moisture meter? Why did it not indicate that this plant was slowly dying? It's because traditional houseplant instructions make you kind of fixate on the aspect of watering without understanding that light is what drives useful water usage. Because soil can just dry out from evaporation. And when a plant is sitting in a dark corner, it's still going to evaporate. So your moisture meter will tell you that at some point the soil will reach you know, dry and then you'll think, oh, it's time to water again. But that doesn't address the fact that the plant was not doing any photosynthesis. And when you combine that with bright indirect light, you wouldn't be alerted to the fact that there is way too little light here. This is where a light meter would have helped you a lot more because I would have told you, make sure the plant is getting somewhere between 200 to 400 foot candles at minimum. Then you would take the light meter and measure right beside where this plant is sitting and clearly see that probably wouldn't be any higher than 30 to 50 foot candles. If you don't have a light meter, then you need to just put your plants where they have the widest possible view of the sky. 
if you want to figure out exactly how far away you can put a plant and still get adequate light, well now you will need a light meter in order to tell you exactly how low you can go. So I hope you found this video helpful and got some clarity on lighting. If you want me to take a look at your lighting situation, feel free to email me, help at houseplantjournal.com. I'm Daryl from Houseplant Journal. Thanks for watching. Bye.